You know, I somewhat enjoy racing games, maybe not similar type games that are more grounded in realism like your Forzas or Need for Speeds, but more like your Mario Karts, your F-Zeros, and your Extreme Gs, which is a very underrated franchise that was only held back by the hardware that it was on. You may have been a, we have F-Zero at home, but you were mine. Say something! You're as beautiful as the day I lost you. I've been itching like a crackhead for years trying to find a decent racer in the same regards as to those games. That itch slowly faded with the release of Ballistic NG. This game I have fallen in love with in the last week or two. Let's start off with the things I like because there's a laundry list of things I adore about this game. The graphics has to be one of my favorite recreations of old graphics ever. It sticks the landing of trying to mimic those PlayStation 1 Wipeout games when it comes to the vibe and the visual design of the whole entire game. There's even a mode that replicates the wobby effect of the PlayStation 1 games where the characters in the backgrounds would sort of never hold still because of the rendering style at the time. And there are also other effects that make it more feel like it's at home with those games. The Europunk inspired levels bring so much nostalgia to games such as Extreme G. The layout of the track sort of reminds me of Mario Kart 8 and F-Zeros where the track is going in every which way. The graphics feel like they brought retro graphics a new fresh coat of paint to stand up to modern standards and I love the blend of both retro and modern techniques such as the beautiful lighting that couldn't happen on the original play PlayStation 1, but also keeping the jagged sort of level design that is known for the PlayStation racing games. The gameplay is great, but I do have to admit it is something that I had to get used to after a while. It has some of the fastest gameplay that I've seen from any racer. You thought F-Zero was fast? I think this is faster in my opinion. The tracks are all fantastically slick and tightly designed, maybe too tightly designed, which I'll get to that later. It always feels like you barely made that corner, which is both the scariest feeling but also the most satisfying at the same time. Time. This game comes with around 13 officially made maps. Meanwhile, the community main maps is around 80, which this game says that it's around 24 hours to complete, but I would say that it's probably around 8 to 10 hours maybe at most. But if you do include the 80 tracks, that is pretty damn impressive. That is a lot of content for an indie game, which I give them great props for committing a lot of effort and time into this game. Unlike some games, I'm looking at you Skyworld. This is a rare occurrence on this channel where I actually review a game that is longer than a few hours. It's like an eclipse where you see me cover a longer game and then never again. Maybe I just like games that don't really overstay their welcome. Or it's because they're lazy. Bring out the AAA games. Man, I want my games to release with zero content and then over five years actually get a full game. Unlike these indie games. You're telling me that indie releases are full releases? Pfft, I don't want that shit. Get that the fuck away from me. I demand slop. The soundtrack I typically don't cover on this channel, but I really just enjoy the sort of Euro pop inspired music that's playing. Sure, it's nothing special, but it gets the job done relatively well. I love the whole entire aesthetic of this game with the bold futuristic design that is in games like Jet Set Radio and yet again, Extreme G, I'm sorry, I keep on sucking its cock, but I have to. Play it, damn it. It makes the game pop in a sea of games that lack a certain style to them that makes them memorable. I love the system that's implemented where you die slowly whenever you boost or whenever you bump into something harshly, like the F-Zero games. It makes those last moments intense and it makes you really focus on the layout of the track and appreciate the game even more more. I love the different weapons that you can use to screw over the other enemies. It would be great if I wasn't in the lead for most of the time, which this isn't me bragging, I know that sounds like it, but it is the case for most of the time, even on harder difficulties. Now to the negatives, which is probably just a me problem, but these are the problems I did have with the game. I feel like there needs to be an improvement to the AI because I feel like it is just too easy sometimes, like I said before. This issue isn't just an issue to this game, it's also an issue with other games where medium feels too easy, but hard is pretty much impossible. But I feel like half of the difficulty sliders in this game are just way too easy. And then all of a sudden there isn't just a medium it's just you're always in 8th place once you just reach a certain difficulty point. There just isn't really in between, which is just jarring. The tracks, even though they're cleverly thought out, I do feel like there is too much restrictiveness when it comes to them. I feel like a good chunk of the time I'm just slamming into walls or a turn is too sharp, even for the most maneuverable vehicles. I understand that it's supposed to be a challenge and that the layout is made for those who know the controls in and out, but a little bit more breathing room for the tracks would be a nice addition. 
The shading, even though it looks pretty good in a lot of places, the very dark levels can be very hard to tell where your vehicle is sometimes, and it can result in me crashing into walls because I don't even know where it's at on the screen. I wish that the shading at the nighttime stages would be illuminated more, or that they can make the car stand out more with the environment. Maybe some sort of outline mode. There's this weird thing that happens with the tracks which I think is intentional, but something about it just seems like it's not. Whenever you drive on a track that is too steep of an upwards or downwards climb, it does this sort of jumping motion that brings your vehicle's speed just considerably down. My personal belief is that the more twisty turny the courses get, the more it fucks with how the physics of the game engine that it's working on is handled, but that's just my personal game theory. I did get a few stutters here and there while playing, but they were far in between. And lastly, I wish that the courses were a little bit longer. I feel like a lot of them are yet again greatly designed, but it seems like I can finish the races too fast. As if it's a more complex NASCAR track that is quick to make a lap on more than something that is more grand in size, you know what I mean? Overall, I was expecting very little when I started playing this game. I just thought that it was just a nostalgia bait to quote better years of gaming, but I can safely say that it's more than that. It blends both modern game graphics and old school together to where it feels old to be retro again. I feel like it would have been at home with the systems that I was trying to imitate and the games that it had influence from. Despite a few hiccups here and there, I think that this is genuinely a good game that you should get. Not on a discount like I typically recommend. I think $15 is extremely fair and over-delivering for a game of this size. I'll give this game a 8 out of 10. If you like hard as nails retro racing games, then this is it. Anyway, subscribe if you want to, like if you want to, even comment if you want to. I don't care, you do you, and have a good day.